Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Monster Movie Thoughts. Let me start by going into the love between Selby and Lee. Lee's love of Selby is a sort of clingy, needy love. She can't completely... She has trouble dealing with other people being around Lee. You know, the... Those couple of friends that she makes, you know, the in the gay bar, where they meet up at Fun World later, you know, she doesn't join them, she just awkwardly stands back and, you know, goes on a few rides by herself, and then they meet up later when the friends are going home. It's very clear that Lee has given up on being accepted by other people. She doesn't expect society to take her in, you know, uh, there's the brief stint where she tries to get work, but, you know, by and large, she's accepted that there isn't room for her in society. At most, she can be a hooker. Whereas Selby, and, and she doesn't feel, you know, the need for other people. She's been let down too often. You know, you hear the story of how you know, her siblings abandoned her, even though she had been supplying them with, you know, food and I think also clothing. Selby's love, however, is a more... You can debate if she truly does love her. Maybe she stops loving her near the end because, you know, she does kind of just sell her down the river with the, you know, first the call where the, you know, the agents or the cops are listening in, and then, you know, with the court appearance, you can say that maybe she did kind of abandon her. I get that Lee is, you know, also taking responsibility because she was the one who killed them, but there is just no, you know, I think that Selby is closer to feeling accepted. She did have her parents and she lived with, you know, Donna and her family for a while, both very Christian, clearly. She does feel like there is a chance she could be accepted by society and she can't completely handle being alone. She does need other people. But her love is a more for most of it, I do think that she does love Lee, but she also needs other people. She needs to go out, you know. She can't... You know, she hasn't had all these terrible experiences making her just seek the solitude, you know. I mean, even when you look at Lee, the, the one man she does trust, Thomas, Bruce Dern, even with him, there isn't a real kind of, you know, I think it's mutual sympathy, mutual understanding, and that's kind of it, you know, it's not like they're hanging out all the time, you know, they just, he helps her out every now and then, you know, when he can, and that's kind of it. Their friendship doesn't go much deeper than that. The, the killings, I would say that the hatred of men was already huge in Eileen by the time she meets that first John that we see her with, who, you know, molests her. I think... It's, it's grown because she was never accepted by men, and she was only ever seen as something to, you know, as a body. A body to either look at or even to have sex with, and that's it. She's never been appreciated, maybe especially by men, you know, and, and she's had to make her way as a prostitute for all these years, so she's met men that couldn't get sex other ways, you know, I'm not saying all men who go to prostitutes can't, but some of them, that's the reason. 
it's also hinted or clear in the line, you know, the John says that he loves women and he hates them. And she isn't shocked by this. She says, yes, that's how it is. That's how she feels about the other gender as well, is what I take from that line. When he attacks her, she just explodes. That was, that was the spark to ignite what was already a humongous hatred for the entire gender. And after that, she just, she can't go back. You know, we see, we see her with the next John, and he, he says the same thing. You know, she is already, uh, it's already awkward for her. It's already a very strange situation for her to be back in that kind of position. And then he triggers that in her again, and she realizes she can't go back, she can't completely stop killing, and at this point, I watched this with friends last night, and we debated what really is, you know, they suggest why doesn't she rob a bank, it would be quicker, she'd get more money out of it. I think the thing is that she feels it's what she knows, she knows how to attract men, but she can't have sex with them anymore so she kills them. And that's kind of the... you know, at that point. And what I love about the movie is that it does not paint my gender as just purely evil. There are some really awful men in this movie, but at the same time there are some that are... you know, Thomas never actually lets her down. She thinks he does, but he was actually trying to help her there at the end. It would probably only have bought her time. She would probably not have gotten away with killing a cop. But he was still trying to help her, you know, with his last ounce of strength. You know, he couldn't come out and say it, but he was really trying to... you know, so... it does not demonize anyone completely. We understand where Lee is coming from even when we do not approve of what she's doing. I would say the most tragic of the killings is the very last one when, you know, the man is clearly trying to help her. You know, she... at, at that point she's pretty much given up on the idea that you know, males will ever help her, will ever do anything but hurt her, and when he sees the picture of her children, he actually asks, are they okay? And she's taken aback by this. She's She does a double take. And at that point she starts to kind of realize, and then he goes on to say, you know, maybe what you really need is, you know, a bath, some warm clothes, and she knows, you know, I, I can't kill this man, and she tries to get out, she, you know, even before the car has come to a stop, but then he sees the gun, and she is certain that he will, you know, reveal what she looks like, and you know, she kills him even as he's talking about, you know, his family and his grandchild on the way. And I, f I think it's in an incredibly powerful scene, partially on account of how much she does not want to do it. She does not want to kill this man, but she feels she has to. And that is really... It's a, an example, almost a symbol, of the entire, you know, to use the old saying, her life story. She doesn't want to, but she feels she has to, and she will be hated for it. And that's 
that was the situation that she at least felt she found herself in. The the relationship between Selby and Lee is also interesting how it develops, how it starts out as you know, she, Lee just wants to take care of Selby because there is that kind of, she's very protective as we also see in the restaurant when she orders a Shabliss and tosses the note on the table. I'm really not sure that that kind of establishment you just do that, I think you pay after your meal, but whatever. It's not that a man is, you know, talking to them or touching Eileen, it's that a man is about to touch Selby. And that is not something Eileen is prepared to accept. She tosses him away, and, you know, the kind of, you know, she... It's partially her hatred of men and her overprotectiveness of Selby. You know, there's also the line, you know, I want to meet someone without you scaring them away. You know, the... And so at first, it's just Lee trying to, you know, earn some money and take care of Selby. And then once the killing begins, also... Note that Selby clearly does realize that something is wrong from early on. She, she can tell that you know Lee did not make all this money by hooking for a night or something. But she doesn't completely, you know, she accepts it because it's a nice situation for her. There's something in it for her. She can live good off this money. I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm saying it's human nature to not question something that, you know, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. This, and that, you know, Lee also mentioned, points that out later when Selby confronts her after she actually says, you know, that car belongs to a dead man. After Selby realizes that there is a lot of money here, she starts to want and want more. And Eventually, she can't completely, you know, near the end of the movie, she says, this is your plan, so get us a car. You know, she won't accept anything less than what's been promised to her. She's used to getting some good, you know, the, the idea of her hooking is never really brought up, and, you know, there's also, she doesn't seem to get a job at any point, so it does kind of become... You know, that the relationship is entirely Lee taking care of Selby. We have the... It's, it's an example of a relationship continuing on the path that it was initially, you know, put on. When, in any relationship, you have to define the boundaries early on because it's much, diff much more difficult to change them later on sometimes impossible, perhaps especially in, you know, a dating or married kind of relationship. The, the scene where Selby wants to have sex with Lee, and she doesn't realize that Lee has been raped recently, is also a very good, strong scene because you know, Selby really does think at that point that, at that point they haven't actually slept, slept together yet. At that point, Selby is still not sure that Lee desires her. And, you know, her pulling away from Selby is actually, because she was recently raped, she's not ready yet for more intimacy. She's not ready to let her guard down like that. But Selby, of course, reads it as, you know, she's not even going to have sex with me. She thinks I'm going, I'm going to support her, 
and that she doesn't even have to have sex with me, you know. I thought that the violence and sexuality was handled well, it didn't feel gratuitous. There wasn't really anything that shouldn't at all have been in there, I felt. And I thought the narration and the stories from Eileen's past also really added to it. You know, the tragic story of her having been raped as a child by her father's friend and she was beaten for it. You know, this kind of demonization of female sexuality that if a woman has any kind of sexuality other than what her surroundings allow her to, she is punished for it, whether it's actually her for her fault or not. You know, the man is not punished as much, sometimes not at all. You know, and I think it is important to to highlight that that's actually still a problem. You know, a lot of people think that that's like, you know, for other countries with other cultures, but it does happen in a Christian culture as well. And the, you know, the disbelief and the silence is really part of this problem that you can't come forward and say that something like that has happened to you without someone judging you. And there are going to be a lot of people who don't even believe that, you know, that it's the truth. And obviously, yes, some do lie about having been, having been raped, but it should at least be looked into. You know, we should start out by thinking Maybe she's telling the truth, you know, maybe this is, maybe this did really happen, or he for that matter. I also thought the, you know, her dream of eventually making it, you know, being famous, was a very poignant aspect of the film. I think a lot of people do feel like that, maybe especially in America, that, you know, eventually I will make it. I will be the, you know, the biggest and all of these people will regret the way they treat me, will regret that they didn't think that highly of me, you know. It's, you know, everybody wants to be appreciated and when you're pushed down a lot, you'll feel an even greater need for appreciation and a need for even greater appreciation. You know, you'll want to be loved by everyone in the world. You'll want to be seen and heard by everyone. And the introduction to the film, the, you know, the very beginning of her talking about how she's, you know, she finally woke up from the dream, it also works really well because there is that kind of, you know, you can tell from her later, you know, from her trying to get a job, she is kind of naive. She doesn't, she hasn't completely thought through how she's going to, you know, what, what her options are. You know, it's, you know, she's driven by the hope, the, the love. She has faith. She has faith in Selby and that makes her feel like she can do more, you know, and I think it's also an important point that when she does try to get a job, she still isn't accepted by society, you know, she's picked up by that cop when she hasn't been hooking for a little while and he still treats her as if he caught her while, you know, trying to hook. But yes, the dream, she, you know, she wakes up and that's when reality really hits her. You know, at first it happens some before she meets Selby and as one of my friends remarked, she's very thirsty in that first bar scene. And 
then again, you know, when she's with the John, she is far too careless. You know, it's again the naivete and her having li lived a dream. She hasn't really thought about the possible consequences. You know, there isn't that much... She hasn't taken, taken any precautions. You know, it's far too easy for him to attack her like that. And, you know, without at all saying that anything that first John did was okay, you can still understand him. And that's something incredible about the film. Even when people are at their most horrible, you can still understand them. It's this kind of... he, he feels a need to have power over women. He can't handle when women have power over him. He can't handle. We don't know everything about him, but let's say he does. he's not happy with his job. He doesn't make a lot of money. A lot of people in America don't. He is not, especially in that, you know, social layer. And he is not, you know, and his wife probably isn't very happy about that. And he feels this kind of, you know, a lot of men feel like they have, they are being controlled by women. And I would say women do have considerable power over us, mostly in the psychological sense. And the thing is that, you know, you just have to accept that and learn to live with it. And, of course, avoid women who really abuse that power. Here's a news flash for those who think it's everyone. It's not all of them, okay? It, it's not. There are some wonderful women out there. So, you know, you, it's, it's that he can't push through. It's that he, it's that she doesn't do exactly what he wants. You know, that's the thing. He, he repeats his demand several times, and then finally he just attacks her. Because that's what he, you know, he feels the need to have power over. And it's also, you know, it's pretty clear that he has probably killed before. Or he was at least going to kill her, you know, chop her up, bury her somewhere. You know, so, you know, with that first one, you can really understand her actions. Anyway, I think that's everything there is for me to say about the movie. If there's anything you feel I've missed out on commenting on, let me down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.